In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use bearings, which are often used in navigation. To start, let's imagine that we have two points, point A and point B, and we're asked to find the bearing of B from A. So basically, what this question is asking is if we start at A, what direction do we need to travel in to get to B? Now, if we draw an arrow going from A to B, then we can see that we sort of need to go up and to the right, or north and then east. However, this description isn't very specific. So what we can do instead is write the direction as a bearing. And whenever you work with bearings, there are three important rules that you need to be aware of. The first rule is that we always measure the angle starting from north. So because in this question, we want the bearing from A, we should add a north line to point A so that we know where to start the angle from. The second rule is that we always measure the angle clockwise from north. So in this case, that's going to be this angle here that we want to measure, and not this angle around here, because this larger angle would be measuring it counterclockwise. And finally, the third rule is that we always write our bearings using three digits. So if you measured this angle with a protractor and got 65 degrees, then to express that as a bearing, you'll need to write it as 0, 6, 5 degrees so that it has three digits. Let's try another one. So this time we have the points P and Q, and we need to find the bearing of point P from point Q. So importantly, this time we're trying to find the bearing from Q. So we're starting at Q and need to go in this direction to get to P. So to find the bearing, we're going to start off by drawing the north arrow. And then we're going to measure this angle here, which is the clockwise angle going around from north. And in this case, this angle is 310 degrees. Then as a last step, we need to make sure that our angle has three digits, which in this case it already does, so our bearing is 310 degrees. Now one practical thing to point out here is that most protractors only go up to 180 degrees rather than 360 degrees, and so you may actually not be able to measure this whole 310 degree angle at once. If this is the case, then it's probably easier to measure this smaller angle which you would find is 50 degrees, and then use that to work out our bearing, which we could do by doing 360 minus 50, because remember there are 360 degrees in a complete circle, and that would give us the 310 degrees of our bearing. Now when it comes to your real exams, they're often going to make these bearing questions more difficult by adding in a lot of extra information or asking you to do something a bit more complicated than just find a bearing. So this here is a more realistic exam style question. Feel free to give the video a pause and have a go at it yourself before I go through it. Okay, so we're told in the question that the diagram below shows the positions of two people, person A and person B, and that both of them are trying to find a pond. Then we're also told that the bearing of the pond from person A is 56 degrees, and the bearing of the pond from person B is 260 degrees. And our job is to mark the position of the pond with a cross and label it P. So the first thing that we would normally do is draw our north arrows, but they've already given us those in the question. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is draw our bearings onto the diagram. For the bearing of 56 degrees from A, we can use a protractor to measure a 56 degree angle clockwise from north, and then we can draw our bearing. And I've done it here as a dashed line because I don't know where along the line the pond will be. I just know that somewhere along this line there will be a pond. Then we can do exactly the same thing for the bearing of 260 degrees from B, which will give us this line. And finally, because we know that the pond is on both of these lines, we know that it must be where they cross, which is just here. So we can label that point P. 
And that's it. We found the pond. Anyway, that's everything for this video. So if you found it useful, then please do give us a like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.